It's a scientific miracle. A mother gave birth to a set of twins earlier this month using embryos that were 30 years old. It is absolutely amazing, and it could be just the start of more embryo-related scientific advancements. For more on how this happened and what the future could hold, we spoke with Nine News health expert, Dr. Pyle Coley. Here's our conversation with her. Thanks for joining us here on Nine News Plus. I'm joined by Nine News medical expert, Dr. Pyle Coley, for a bit more on a remarkable story. A couple gave birth to 30-year-old embryos. I just walk us through this remarkable bit of science. Um, full transparency, I saw you do a quick segment about this on Nine News. I was just captivated by what you were talking about, and then I said, can we talk about this on Nine Plus as well? Yeah, you know, Chris, it's amazing how much progress science has made. Uh, so we've been doing IVF or in vitro fertilization since the late 1980s. And in vitro means in a test tube. And fertilization means the process of taking an egg from a woman and taking a sperm from a man, kind of half the genetic material you need, combining them together, um, fertilizing, one with the other, which turns into an embryo, which is that 100% of genetic material. Now an embryo starts as a single cell, and then it divides, 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 and then nine months later, it turns into a whole baby. But essentially what we do is we create the embryo in a Petri dish, we divide it to a certain stage, watch it for a few days, at which point we can then do genetic tests on the embryo and determine grade it, determine how fit the embryo is. So we can actually figure out is it a healthy embryo or not a very healthy embryo. And then we would only freeze the ones that are healthy or immediately transfer them into a woman's uterus where that's kind of the oven where the embryo bakes and turns into a baby nine months later. Remarkable in so many different ways. There's a fact, and my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, is that these are the longest uh, embryos that were frozen correct 30 years I believe the previous record was 27 is that right that's right now we don't exactly know because it's entirely possible there could be embryos out there that were frozen in the late 80s that are even older than this but as far as we can tell from the database and the tracking that we've done these are the ones that have turned into babies and and the way that this sort of came about is that you know when you do IVF as a couple you end up with a lot more embryos than you're going to have babies in fact some people end up with dozens hmm. of embryos that they have and they end up just picking one or two and transferring them into the uterus. So all the rest of them are sort of sitting there frozen and they can be donated to medical research. So stem cell research, a lot of that comes from embryos. They can also be donated to other couples who are struggling because you can imagine infertility is complex and for some people it, they can't carry the baby but for other couples they can't have an egg or they don't have the sperm. So getting the embryo already sort of you know fertilized and ready to transfer is really a godsend and that's what happened in this case. The, the parents, mm. the original parents of the embryo had, had donated it to another couple. The couple that ended up receiving it said they actually wanted the embryos that were so quote unquote difficult to place. And this one particularly because it was so old, these two embryos, uh, and they accepted it and they ended up having these kids that if you think about, remarkable, they should have been born 30 years ago. I know. And it's almost like time travel. Uh, I believe the embryos were first frozen in April 1992. That's right. Context of Bill Clinton was just starting his uh, first two terms as president of the United States. This is a long time ago. That said, did we learn something about the lack of, perhaps lack of expiration date? Like, how long can an embryo sit frozen before it's potentially used? 30 years is remarkable. It is remarkable. And we actually don't know is a short answer. Now, we do know that the process of freezing is very important. So the grade of the embryo when it's frozen, mm. the age of the mom when she donated you know, the eggs for the embryo, and then the way in which it is frozen are all very important. Uh, now, once it is frozen, you sort of, again, you know, pause the clock, the biological clock on the embryo. So presumably it could sit even for 50 years, perhaps even 100. We don't have that data. It's a little bit of a guess. Uh, it would be really important to follow these kids really carefully because we're learning more and more about frozen embryo transfers. Just in the last few months, we've learned, for example, that women who receive frozen embryo transfers have a higher risk of having pregnancy uh, related complications like hypertension mm. during pregnancy or high blood pressure. So we know that frozen embryos are different from fresh embryos. We, we're learning what really old embryos are compared to recently frozen embryos. We know we've gotten better at our technique of how to 
freeze the embryo, uh, you, which is an art. We also know that we lose some embryos in the thawing process. So every frozen embryo, you know, doesn't thaw and survive. Some of them, the DNA actually degrades as you're thawing them. So the thawing process is equally as important as the freezing process. And, and speak about that, right? It's not as simple as you put an embryo in a freezer, you don't think about it, and there you go, and then you just get it out one day, right? It's not. You really have to be very careful about actually taking out all the liquid from the embryos and then actually putting in a preservative and hmm. then flash freezing it in what's called liquid nitrogen, which is extremely cold. So you have very, 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 very low temperatures. And essentially what you're doing is pausing the cell division. Because the way an embryo turns into a, a baby is it keeps dividing, dividing, dividing. And then those cells, which are stem cells, meaning they can turn into any type of cell, start differentiating. So some will become hair, some will become organs, some will become, you know, your skin. They start turning into different types of cells. So what you've done when you've frozen an embryo is pause uh, the, the, the cell replication process into at a stem cell stage. So still those cells can become anything. But to your point, if you haven't stored them correctly, if you haven't thawed them correctly, or again, if the process with which they were frozen was faulty, then they can certainly have complications. Now, some of these embryos, if you know they're not, once they're thawed, ready to, to be transferred, or they're not good embryos, they may not actually turn into pregnancy. They may spontaneously abort. If they're unhealthy embryos, they may not even stick in the first place. And so that's a sign. Others, of course, mom can miscarry the baby, and that would be the other sign. So the fact that the 30-year-old embryos turned into to twins tells us that they were probably very healthy embryos, and that freezing and thawing process was done very carefully. What are other long-term scientific implications we can take away from this? You know, I think about the ethical implications, of course, mm. because we are really changing the reproductive process here. And we've talked in the past about cloning mammals. We've been able to clone a sheep. You know, is that something down the line we might think about for humans who are struggling with infertility or such, or perhaps even you know, cloning as a way to have organ transplants and those types of mm -hmm. things. Those are ethical issues that come up. Uh, when you're thinking about fertility, it's become, you know, less of a biological process and more of a choice as our population has become more career oriented and we've sort of thought about delaying family to a little bit later. So a lot of women are choosing to freeze their their eggs or if they're in a relationship, they can make embryos and freeze them at a younger age to sort of pause that biological clock. Because, you know, a, mom is, a, a woman is born with all the eggs that she's ever going to have. So every year that she delays childbearing, those eggs are getting older and less healthy, and her egg reserve goes down. So if, if you're a woman in your late 20s or early 30s, that's really the time to think about either freezing your eggs or if you're in a relationship making some embryos and, and freezing those, because the implications are much more likely to have a healthy pregnancy than if you decide to do it in your late 30s or early 40s, where even the process of harvesting those eggs and, and making those embryos can pose more risk to the mom. So it's almost just as much social science as it is actual science, isn't it? It really is. It really is, if you think about it. And I have a, 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 a two friends of mine. It's, it's a male couple, a male homosexual couple. And they actually made, you know, embryos, but they're mixed race. And so they picked one egg from one race and you know, the sperm from the opposite race, and, and then they mixed them all together. And so if you think about the implications for many of the same-sex marriages that we have out there, think about the implications for single parents, for cancer survivors, even for the rest of us who are just, you know, want to get older, but we want to have life on our terms and kids on our terms, this is really incredible, the way that science has allowed us to sort of choose when and how we have our families. That's remarkable. And you mentioned that we've seen an increase in the amount of people uh, uh, freezing, their, uh, freezing their eggs here? A substantial increase. In fact, it's become extremely commonplace. I do want to make women aware that it's not, not the same as natural conception. And I think that is an important message to send. It's not exactly the same. It is a little bit different. We don't think there are any long-term risks to mom or baby, but as we've talked about, there could be some short-term risks during the pregnancy itself, during obviously the process of, of ovarian stimulation to harvest those eggs and all that. So it's a decision that I encourage people to make if they think it's the right decision, but I also want to be sure that people get education, educated about it, talk to their doctors, figure out if it's the right thing for them.
Um, but really be active about this choice. Don't be passive when it comes to waiting till your late 30s and then saying, okay, maybe now it's time for IVF. Really start asking this question much earlier, and that's what these types of stories highlight for us.